Who's ready to close a flap? This guy. That's what we're doing this week. So what you're watching me do in this first part of the video is dimpling all the things. Now typically, and I go, I go through and I dimple with the pneumatic squeezer whatever I can. It's just really convenient. There are places on these ribs though, especially as you get down towards this narrow part, where the pneumatic squeezer is not really handy and I have to go to a handheld tool. If you look at it, it's just a pair of uh, locking pliers with the dimple tool welded onto the end. Simple and convenient. Then I put the, the big dimple machine, the DRDD2, up on the table and I dimple all the skins with that. As you might imagine, dimpling all that stuff took forever. <sighs> Once everything's dimpled though, I begin putting together all the sub-assemblies like these guys. Uh, and, and a lot of that is just simply following the instructions, putting the you know appropriate called out rivet into the appropriate called out part. Uh, and again, thankfully I have the left and the right segregated such that I know exactly what piece goes where. Plus I've also got marks all over everything. So I always can put something back exactly where it went. A note on that is don't be afraid to write on your part with a permanent marker saying this part is for that because it, one, it wipes right off with some acetone and two, uh, you're going to mark up and scar up and tear up this stuff, something fierce when it comes to painting. So don't feel like having a little marker on there is going to stop it. Write on it. That way you don't screw it up. Then once I'm done putting together these parts, um, we go towards the final assembly. Um, but before I wanted to, I wanted to talk a little bit about these guys. So talking about these flap hinge brackets, one thing I had said previously was that um, I intentionally updrilled these flanges out here uh, from a 40 to a 30, made it a bigger hole. And the reason I had done that is because I had been told by somebody that uh, it would stiffen up this part considerably. And uh, at the time, I, I didn't really think it was necessary. Um, but now I can kind of appreciate it. So this is the final product and it's fully riveted together. And you can see in this picture here that I think I've done a pretty good job of smoothing out those four rivets across the back and making it as just as stiff as possible. And it is, this is really stiff. Now with this piece, so this is the center one, it's got this middle layer here that's all riveted together. And so this was gonna be stiff as heck anyways, but the one on either side don't. There's nothing in here. So the only thing holding these two pieces together are those four rivets. So that makes me think that actually moving from the 3-3.5 up to a 4-4, -4, yeah, that was probably a good idea because this is, this is pretty stiff. This is a pretty stout part. And so, okay, I can see why that's, that's a good thing. Uh, and again, I think it came out just fine. Stiff, solid. Yeah, okay. I, I, can, I can go ahead and recommend doing that. Unless someone has a reason not to. By the way, guys, I just wanted to say thank you to my patron supporters. And if you want to be a patron supporter, if you click the link down below, just for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can help support me. Thank you so much for that. Also, I wanted to say that if you want to build a Vans aircraft and you absolutely can do it, if these videos are helping you decide at all, if you use my builder number down below as a reference, when you order your kit, Vans will send me a hundred bucks. These two guys did the same thing recently, and now they're on their way to a really cool journey. You can be on your way to that journey too. It's just think of it as a way to support me. It's no money out of your pocket. Anyways, back to it. Once we have all the skins and all the parts dimpled accordingly, it's time to start final assembly. So we go through and we start putting everything back together and get that skeleton all riveted together. That's a lot of riveting 4-4 or 4-4 yeah, rivets, the, the round headed 474-4s. Uh, and it's really awkward. Um, You'll see me go back through and, and, and try to figure out how I'm going to do it. And I flip the piece around and do this, that, the other way. And it took forever to finally just get comfortable. I was trying to use the squeezer, but there was just no good way to get in there with a the squeezer. It was just real awkward. So, uh, it, it, it really came down to the ribs. Uh, the ribs, they're just, they're just real small, honestly. So, uh, I ended up doing everything with a bucking bar and it worked out great. It was much better off. In fact, um, one of the things people have asked me before, if I ever need that stepped, uh, that stepped nose for, for the, for the uh, rivet gun, and the answer is absolutely. Uh, you're gonna use it. It's just really handy because it does exactly that. It kind of gets around 
where, where you need to go. Uh, so that's what I did there. The next thing I want to talk about, though, is uh, these guys. You're going to need these these carriers. And in the plans, it says build three per wing or three per flap, rather. Uh, build four, four per flap, because there are two nose skins for each flap. And if you have two of the carriers on each end and only one more, then that other one is just going to be hanging open and kind of funky. So having a, a fourth is really handy and even having like a fifth and a sixth to go in the middle is it's not untoward uh untoward rather and really they're easy to generate um i can send you guys a file or something like that you know if you guys want to crank them i just i just cranked them out on my uh cnc machine right quick so there's that So this is interesting. Um, step two on page 22-7 of the flaps says to put a bend along the trailing edge of the, the forward skin. Um, but at this point, we've already dimpled it. And so I thought, that's, that's weird. Shouldn't we do that before we dimple? And so I made this test piece just to see. Um, it's too late now, obviously. But I went ahead. And what I did here is I... I, I I have these holes along here and then I have holes over here and I I used my tool here this is a uh, trailing edge bending tool the idea is it just puts ever so slight cur uh, a crease in the end like this image right here you can kind of see that that little bit of a crease um, and that's what this tool does it's really simple and you don't want to overdo it it's, it's actually a really easy tool to use what I did is I drilled these three holes here didn't dimple them and ran the tool across it and then dimpled the holes and over on these row of holes i dimpled all of them and then ran the tool between each dimple undoing it and then redoing it to go back and forth between each dimple undoing redoing back and forth between each dimple etc and it turns out yeah that's much better that's infinitely better going between each dimple than going back and dimpling over the entire creased edge the it's kind of wavy when you've got the dimples put in afterwards so as awkward as it seems and it's kind of this weird start and stop thing um yeah using this tool between each of the dimples after it's already in seems to work pretty well now it'll be interesting to see what it looks like once it's finalized uh and i've got everything riveted down hopefully i didn't just screw everything up Once you get the nose in there and you, you, you get the top skin put in place and you clique it all up, you begin th going through and putting the blind rivets or pop rivets around that nose skin. There's just no way to get in there with a bucking bar at all. So uh, let me talk to that for a sec. So these, the fronts here, the, the, these skins on the front where you just can't possibly have access to the back of it to do any kind of solid riveting, you're gonna use pop rivets. And the number 19 BIS um, pop rivet that you use, or 319, 319 BIS that you use on the front, they're ever so slightly larger than the number 40 hole that you've drilled. And so I actually have a number 19 or 319 BIS drill bit. It, 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 it's designed to do exactly this. And I mean, the difference, it doesn't even feel like you're cutting anything when you, when you use it. You'll put it in the hole and it just feels like it goes right in and out with no cutting at all. Um, and even then putting this in here, it's, it's ever so slightly tight. But if you don't use that, you're not gonna get it in there. Um, and there's, you know, you, I, I'm not sure if, it, if it's a mistake or what, but for whatever reason, the number 40 drill bit, slightly too small for these. So that's just something to keep in mind. So while I continue working in the background, I thought I would talk to that just for just a second. Um, the number 40 drill that you use, if you convert it to decimal, you can see here that it's 0 0.0980. Well, using my little micrometer, the the 319 
pop rivets are 764 and that's what that drill bit is it's a 764 drill bit and you can see here that's 0.1094 so of course it's going to be slightly larger um, i believe i read somewhere that people recommended using a 34 or 35 drill bit but i, I don't actually know where to get one of those i'm sure you can order them online uh, but either way, a 764 drill bit seems to work just fine and able to do those pop rivets just perfectly. So I did have more video of me talking, you know, video overlay of me talking. Unfortunately, uh, I lost it. So you're going to have to suffer through me talking at you guys this way. Uh, basically, from here on out, all I'm going to be doing is just riveting, standard rivet stuff. Uh, when I flip the, the piece around and I put the bottom skin on, uh, I then have to rivet the bottom most part to the spar that's down there. And you'll see me kind of peel back the skin, stick my hand down in there, do the riveting and just slide down the way uh, the flap as I do it. And that's all that I'm doing here is just a lot of the same kind of riveting you've seen me do literally dozens and dozens of times before. So at this point, I'm supposed to be back riveting. These two rivets right here towards the, the aft end of the flap are back riveted because the space in the ribs is super tight. And you can see they've cut out these notches uh, specifically to allow you to do back riveting. Unfortunately, the tool that I have for back riveting is too big. Um, it's got this white plunger style um, protective piece of plastic, I don't know what this is, Dalran or something, to, to kind of give you something to push down on before you trigger it. And that is way too big to fit in, in there. So, uh, uh, and I can't get it off. I tried, there's like a little, there are little plugs here that you can pull out to pull this whole spring and plastic off and I, I can't get it out of there. So, got to come up with another way to solve it. Um, one thing a lot of people have told me is uh, don't invent ways to solve things. Instead, get the proper tool for the proper job. Um, well, I think I have just the tool for this, the squeezer. Well, there you go. Um, I didn't quite get it all done this week. Uh, I figure I've been out here easily 12 to 14 hours this week alone working on a single flap or for the most part one flap I kind of got both flaps uh, in the it, it, up to the same uh, point where their their frames or skeletons if you will were ready to be you know move on and then I stopped working on the one and started just focusing on the other and once I had all the parts segregated so I I knew exactly that I had mirrored them correctly and then it was all about just getting that uh, left flap completed I had really really wanted to try to get it all done this week, unfortunately, uh, I did not. It just came down to the fact that I just ran out of time. Uh, I gotta go pretend to be a police officer tomorrow, so I can't do uh, can't do any work on it tomorrow. So I thought I'd get this done, get it out the door, so we continue to publish these videos, uh, you know, weekly at the same time. I'm I'm still going for every Sunday, which is a challenge, believe it or not. Uh, so anyways, that's where I'm at. Uh, I do have one question about the flap. So uh, the trailing edge of the flap, uh, one of the requirements is are you put Pro Seal in it. Uh, same stuff we use in the tank, the stinky goop. They want you to put a bead of Pro Seal along that so that when you, when you uh, Clico it all together and you get it all, all set up, it hardens with that Pro Seal. And I don't really understand the point of that. It seems like just extra goop to have in there for not a lot of return. So I'm going to dig around on the forums and find out why exactly we have to use Pro Seal on the trailing edge when honestly just some good double sided tape, you know, good heavy sticky tape and then the rivets, which are actually what are doing the, the holding together. It's not like that part has to hold liquid or anything. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what the advantage of that is. I'll research that and I'll get back to you, but we're all done. Well, we're not all done. We're all done out here this week. Again, it's another hot day, so I'm ready to go home. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, that's where I got to end this one. Unfortunately, like I said, I'd hope to get it done. I'm just not quite there next week for sure. <sighs> Alas, 
Thanks everybody, I really appreciate it. If you do me a favor and click that like button down there, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit the bell if you want notifications. Thanks everyone, see you next time.